Welcome to this film. My name is Ringo Starr and I will be your narrator for this film. Welcome to the island of Seldor, a magical place where trains have faces and talk. Oh, and here comes our number one engine on the island. This is Thomas and his two beloved coaches, me and Clarabelle. Right now, Thomas is working on his branch line and delivering passengers. Yes, right on time. I'm on a roll this week, I need and Clarabelle. Me too, Greedy. Great. Me too, Greedy. Great. And here comes his best friend, Percy. Good morning, Thomas. You're awake early. Or maybe you just woke up late, Percy. You look real nice today. Thanks, you too. Anyways, Thomas, I need to tell you something. So top of that wants everyone to gather down the line for a meeting or something. A meeting about what? Beats me. Anyways, bye, Thomas. I wonder what this is about. I guess we will have to find out. After Thomas was finished dropping off his passengers, he decided to follow Percy and see where he was going, but when he caught up to him, he was very confused. There was Percy puffing towards a crowd of engines by the station. He was very confused, but then remembered that Percy said something about a meeting, so he puffed towards the engines. Hey Percy, do you know what this whole meeting thing is about? No clue, Thomas. So Tom and I just wanted everybody to gather here for an announcement or something. Be quiet, Thomas. Here he comes. Greetings, my fellow engines. Welcome to this meeting. Now I have brought you all here for an important announcement. Two big tanks have been delivered to the island and we have no information of where they came from or what's even in them. I have a question. How do we know if there isn't anything dangerous inside them? That's why we will be testing them out to see if they are safe or not. Now that's really it for this meeting. I just wanted to let you all know just in case. After the meeting was over, it was time for Thomas to get back to work. Unfortunately, his next job wasn't pulling passengers, it was pulling a dirty freight train, and Thomas didn't like that. Instead, he wanted to pull his two coaches. Even though all he was pulling were milk tankers and a brake van, there was one thing that he was still missing. It was Scruffy, a troublesome truck with a name that had been ripped apart by all over the 11th engine on the island. Now you list and you truck to don't cause me any trouble today. Scruffy just laughed. I'll give you trouble whenever I feel like it. Thomas was still annoyed but finished putting his train together and set off.
Thomas was cross the entire trip even though Scruffy didn't cause him any trouble at all. He was still mad about not being able to take his lovely coaches instead of pulling this train. When he finally got to where he needed to be, Oka was there waiting for Thomas, his milk tankers, and Scruffy to arrive. Hello, Thomas. Thanks for bringing your train for me. I have been waiting here for a while now. But since Thomas was still very cross, he was very rude to Boko. Leave me alone, you green bean. I'm not in the mood today. This made Boko very cross. Jeez, Thomas, what is your problem? So I can't say hello. No, you can't. Now go away. Before Boko could say anything back to Thomas, he had already collected his freight cars and was puffing away. After Thomas was finished with his job, he could finally go back to Annie and Clarabelle. While Thomas was on his way to collect Annie and Clarabelle, he spotted the two new tanks that were delivered to the island. Those are the tanks. I say that's a waste of money. While on the way Thomas could see Rosie on a siding upset about something, he was worried for his friend so he asked her what was wrong. Hey Rosie, are you feeling okay today? Not really Thomas, my butler feels funny and the workmen are trying everything they can do to make me feel better. Oh my, well I hope you feel better, I have to go now to go get Annie and Claro, I'll see you later. But after that Thomas was still worried for his friend while he was puffing away, Now it was time for Thomas to take Annie and Clarabel to go and get some more passengers. He was very excited and so were his coaches. Thomas arrived at the station. Meanwhile, Donald was on the other side of the island pulling a freight train. He was just about to fill up his tank when the truck started to play their tricks. Go on, go on, Donald! They pushed Donald so hard he went up the hill, but by then it was too late.
after the explosion, Thomas puffed for his life. This had never happened before, so he was very confused, but kept on puffing. Annie and Clarabelle were also confused, but still scared. Then all of a sudden, they heard a whistle. It was all river coming from Gordon's hill. Thomas tried to warn him that he was going the wrong way, but he wouldn't listen and kept on going. So far, no one knows what happened to him or told with him, but they did look very scared of determined. Toby, come on, get out of the shed, we are all in danger. After Thomas has told, they heard another whistle, but this time it was someone else. It was Douglas puffing backwards. Douglas, wrong way, the other way, this way. Thomas, is that you? But since he couldn't stop in time, it was too late. Then Thomas stopped and looked to the side. There's an empty shed. We can hide there. Thomas was very tired and exhausted from puffing back and forth all day, but now he was safe in the shed with his two coaches. Oh my goodness, Thomas. You look really tired. Yes, I am really tired from puffing all day long. Well, I bet we are all grateful that we are still living. Yes, Clarabelle, I definitely am. And so they started chatting for a little while. Then they heard another sound, but this time it wasn't a whistle. It was Toby rushing down the line in front of the shed and he was also pulling Henrietta. Thomas Annie and Clarabelle tried calling for him to stop, but he didn't stop or respond and seemed to be going to Gordon's Hill. Well, I hope that he will be okay, Aunt Henrietta. Yes, I really hope all my friends are okay.